Good afternoon. My name is Jim DiCarlo. I was trained as a biomedical engineer and a medical doctor, and now I'm a professor of systems and computational neuroscience here at MIT. And as was mentioned, I also direct the MIT quest for intelligence. Now, I believe that the human mind is an emergent phenomena of the human brain. And thus, I believe that the human mind can be understood in engineering terms the same way other complex engineering systems, like a smartphone, are understood. Indeed, my research group and I, along with others around the world, have spent the last 20 years working out, building our contemporary engineering level understanding of a network of neurons that processes the images striking your eyes that allows us to recognize faces and objects. And importantly, we've built that network, built that understanding into computer models. OK, but today, I'd like to take off that careful scientist hat and instead share with you an idea that's far more speculative, unproven, uh, but might be possible. I'm going to call that the big idea. So I'd like you to imagine a future where specific targeted visuals, by which I mean images and movies delivered to our eyes, can improve our health and our lives. For example, imagine a future where images and movies provide physicians new, non-invasive, non-pharmacological treatment options to ameliorate things like mental health disorders. That need, of course, is massive and growing. For example, in 2021, pediatricians issued a national mental health care emergency among our nation's youth. And patients across the board are looking for non-drug, non-invasive therapies. OK, you might be intrigued. Let's consider this big idea. To do that, I'll ask you to just look at this red cross. OK, so now that you're looking, I want you to think about this. That video is activating millions of neurons in the back of your eyes, switching some on and some off. That, in turn, is activating millions of other neurons deep inside your brain, precisely modulating them in very complicated, yet very reliable ways. OK, and this is an illustration of what was essentially going on there conceptually as you watch that movie. Now, those high-level neural patterns of activity, those would underlie what, you, what we call your perceptual mental states. And you probably each experience the content of your perceptual mental state as we describe it in words like giraffe, kiwi, building strawberry, and even Yoda. OK, By, a psychologist would say this is your mental state, and those are the contents of your mental state. OK, now that you have that idea, I'd like you to at least now look at this cross again. And I, as you look at that, I bet everyone in this room currently has in their perceptual mental state the content spoon. But there is no spoon. There's only photons bouncing off that screen and hitting your eyes, activating millions of neurons, inducing other millions of neurons, and then creating a mental concept of spoon inside your head. That is, there's photon energy dosed appropriately is leading to what we might loosely call mental energy in your head. So now perhaps you're convinced that dose photons can precisely modulate your perceptual mental state. Maybe you'll go one step further. Do you think that dosed photon energy on your eyes can precisely modulate how we each feel at the moment? Do you think images can modulate if you feel confident, happy, or motivated? Now, psychologists call this our effective mental state. And moment by moment, changes in our effective mental state are referred to as our emotions. OK, and one well-established fact in neuroscience that makes me intrigued about this big idea and drawn me to it is that the brain's emotional regulation network, called the limbic system, which is partially shown here on the right, receives direct neural connections from that top of that visual system that I described to you earlier. So the opportunity is there. But you, like me, might still be skeptical of this big idea. You might think, well, of course, yet looking at pictures of beaches and nature and puppies might make us happier, but wouldn't that be strong enough to ameliorate conditions like anxiety and depression? And even if it was strong enough to do so, or some other visual was strong enough, we can't sit around and look at pictures of beaches and puppies all day long, right? Well, two recent neuroscience findings from my lab suggest that 
that the idea of images of beaches and puppies suggests that we may just be scratching the surface of this big idea. So let me introduce you to those two findings. The first recent finding is what I'll refer to as metaphorical holes deep inside your visual system. What do I mean by that? And to explain that, I need to give you a bit more background, so get a little technical here. So what you see here is the response of an individual neuron recorded at the high level of a visual system. Each of these little tick marks indicates the neuron's activity. It's signaling, I'm now excited, I'm going to send information and energy to downstream target areas. And you see when we present the images on the left, the neuron doesn't much care about it much. It keeps firing along, spiking along in the same rate that it was before we presented those images. Yet when we shift the images to the images on the right, you see lots of spikes coming out of the neuron in the red box there. And indeed, it's, much evidence argues that it's a neuron like this one, along with all its partners in that area, that together are what's contributing to our shift in our perceptual mental state, in this case, a shift from dog to gauge on the right. Okay, now that you understand that background, the unexpected finding, we found that we can make specific tiny modulations in those images, in this case the dog image, and still cause very large changes in the output of this neuron. So there's an example for this one particular neuron. You see this tiny change in the image that's producing a very large change now in the neural response that you see at the top. Lots of spikes. The neuron loves this change. Okay, that's really, that's a tiny change. It's so small you can barely see it even when I blow it up for you when you compare left to right. So why is this, why do I call this a hole in the visual system? Well, previous research suggested that our visual system was essentially built to shield against these kinds of tiny perturbations. And, and that, that now we think we see it differently, that the, the shield may be more porous than we thought if we can find those holes. And indeed, I believe these kinds of holes in this visual system shield might allow the possibility of designing imperceptible changes that nonetheless transmit significant neural energy out of this high level of the visual system. Okay, that sounds like a, an opportunity, but why would transmitting spikes out of the top of the visual system, say towards the emotional regulation system, have anything to do with helping us to improve our mental state? That doesn't sound like it would necessarily produce desired effects. So now I wanna tell you about a second recent neuroscience finding. Think about not just one neuron at the time spiking, but think about a whole population of neurons like this one shown here. And what I want to show you next is that we can modulate images in ways that tune the pattern of firing across the entire population of neurons, at least in the samples we've observed, and potentially across the entire population. So here's an example from one study a few years ago where we tested this idea. And here the goal was to, here we had 40 neurons recorded that you see arrayed across the bottom. The goal was to turn one of those neurons on, arbitrarily chosen, and turn all the other ones off you see at the top. The image on the right was our custom designed image that we used to try to achieve that goal. And in red here, you see the firing of the neurons in response to that image that are trying to achieve that goal. And you can see it's not quite perfect, um, but it's far better than what we were able to achieve even just a few years ago. And this continues to improve today. So we now have the ability to start to sculpt the full population representations up at high levels of the visual system. This suggests, those two facts combined, that it might be possible to focus neural activity emitted out of these metaphorical holes onto the emotional regulation network and to potentially tune that to particularly desired effects within this network. Now we can, of course, conduct experimental studies now to test those very speculative ideas. And we can someday ask if that tuning can be made precise enough to change the contents of the effective state without changing the contents of the perceptual state. Could we, for example, lower anxiety without affecting the ability to carry out daily tasks, like being able to recognize faces and objects? And because effective mental state tends to change very slowly, maybe over hours or days, we imagine that someday we could provide such modulations via things like augmented reality glasses. Just like many of you put on your glasses and your acuity glasses in the morning and you forget about them, it might be possible to, for example, imagine a future in which we could create, let's call them anxiety-lowering glasses, and that, that you could put them on in the morning and forget about them. And you could, of course, because they're glasses, just like your regular glasses, choose to take them off. Now, you might ask, stepping back, why have these holes that I'm describing gone previously unnoticed and unexploited in the way that I'm describing might be possible here? Well, the number of images that, uh, that could be tested are far greater than all the images that could ever be shown to every human that's ever lived over their entire lifetime. It's a vast space of possibilities. And until now, we just didn't have a guide to help us find images to the effects that we were seeking. 
But that guide is what my lab and others have spent two decades building, a scientific understanding of how information on your eyes is propagated deep into your brain, building computer models of that. And those computer models have guided the creation of the images that I showed you along the way. And those same models now unlock the potential of specific targeted visuals to, I hope, improve our health and our lives. More broadly, this big idea is just one example of what an engineering level understanding of human intelligence might enable. Indeed, I believe that the quest for intelligence will be looked back upon as our greatest human journey. Thank you. Woo!